Riding over cobbles can be a brutal experience. Watching the pros do it on TV doesn't even come close to doing it justice. These things are rough. And the really cruel thing about cobbles is that the slower you go, the rougher they feel. But the good news is you can make things just a little bit more comfortable and even faster by making a few small adjustments to your bike. Now we're lucky enough to have with us today this Trek Damani belonging to Yuroslav Popovich of Trek Sigafredo. It's the bike that he rode in last year's Paris-Roubaix. And as you can see, it's completely race ready with FMB Paris-Roubaix 27 millimeter tires and even the Paris-Roubaix parkour on the top tube. Now we also have with us our very own Orbea Avant off the peg, a bike that's perfect for the pavé and is gonna be ridden by Kofidis in this year's Paris-Roubaix. Does Yaroslav know you've got his bike by the way, mate? The most important equipment choice when riding the cobbles are tyres. They provide your contact point with the road, cushioning and grip. Yeah, basically, the bigger the tyre that you can fit in your bike, the better. Bigger tyres need lower pressures, and then they're much, much better able to absorb the vibration and the hammering coming up from the road. So you stay more comfortable and you go much, much faster. And then there's an added bonus, bigger tyres also have more grip and greater puncture resistance. Now, for most races, the pros will ride 20C tyres running a pressure of around 110, 120 psi, sometimes even more. But for Paru Bay, they'll be riding tyres of the width of 27C to 30C, but running half that pressure. So the losses that they make in rolling resistance on the smooth asphalt will be more than made up for with the gains that they make on the pave. Now, the amount of pressure that you put in your tyre is dependent on your weight, but what's really worth bearing in mind is the fact you increase the risk of punctures or pinch punctures running when you're running clinches as opposed to the tubulars favoured or used exclusively by the pros in Paris Bay. So don't go too low. You could also consider double wrapping your bar tape like Yoslav Popovich has done here just to give you that extra layer of padding. Now it's a very simple job and combined with a good pair of track mitts, should you choose to wear them, can really make a fair bit of difference in relation to your comfort. Water bottle cages, probably not the first thing you'd think about when modifying your bike for the cobbles. And yes, they will not give you instant speed or more comfort, but they play a vital role. You will often see water bottles flying left, right and centre at a cobbled sportif or even at the Tour of Flanders or Paris-Roubaix. And if you lose your water bottle, then you're not going to be able to stay on top of your drinking and your fueling strategies. So it's for that reason that pro mechanics will often either completely swap out carbon bottle cages and replace them with aluminium ones that can then be compressed so they hold the bottle more tightly or actually modifying carbon bottle cages, perhaps putting a little bit of grip tape in there, or like these Trek ones here, they've added little rubber O-rings that mean that your bottle is held really uh, securely. And if you don't have little rubber O-rings, then actually just zip ties tied tightly around there will help to keep that bottle held tightly. As well as bottles rattling loose, you're gonna see plenty of chains rattling off. So first up, make sure that your front mech is indexed properly. And secondly, install a chain catcher. It's a really handy, simple bit of kit, but is remarkably effective and will save you from getting oily hands at the side of the road. And worse still, the chain getting wedged between your chain set and frame and possibly even damaging the frame itself. It is definitely worth checking over every bolt on your bike for tightness, and preferably with a torque wrench, because the last thing that you want is for all the hammering from the cobbles to then make your seat post slip or your bars to rotate forward, or for that aforementioned bottle cage to rattle loose. And then, likewise, it's not just your bike, the accessories that you put on it, make sure they are firmly attached, whether that's a saddlebag or indeed your head unit here. This one has a little screw underneath that means that you can lock it in there. Many pros also opt for cyclocross style levers here on the tops of the bars, but whether you use those yourself would depend on how you ride the cobbles, either on the tops or down on the drops. Although they may actually get you out of a difficult situation should you have to brake suddenly 
whilst riding on the tops because you won't have to move your hands round to the brakes. Now they're probably more relevant if you're riding on an organised ride with a lot of people around you, but not so much if you're just riding solo. So hopefully those little tweaks will make your cobbled experience a little bit more comfortable and maybe a bit quicker too. That's right, and make sure you pack your best pair of legs before you set out. Good point, site. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to GCN, you can do so for free by clicking on the globe. Yeah, and if you're after some more cobbled content, well, why not check out a very special retro versus modern on the cobbles of Flanders. That one is just down there. Or for how to ride the cobbles with me and Lasty, we rode here in the rain. Click just down here. Yeah, it was wet. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, really that. wet.